What's a dead giveaway that someone doesn't have a life? Story one, starting workplace drama. Starting drama, period. It's sad to see someone who was clearly raised on reality TV and who can't stop themselves from making everything into a huge issue and wrecking relationships just for the brief thrill they must get at feeling like their life is interesting. I've known a woman since we were in elementary school, both in our 30s now, and whether she was 10, 20, or 30, the same thing was true. She was always starting drama. She never had a peaceful moment, because she was always starting something with somebody for the flimsiest reasons. We fired someone because, after being warned nicely, then not so much, to just do your job, don't start or perpetuate drama, could not do it. I strongly suspect she had borderline personality disorder, because the directive of just stop doing the thing cannot be followed. The drama was talking to A about B, then B about C, then badmouthing A to C and repeating what others said, or making it up, to each of the others so that there was tons of enmity between everyone. Oh my god, you guys, I saw Bradley making out with Jessica. Oh my god, oh my glob. Yep, worked a job that I'd best describe as being the mean girls version of middle school, and if you didn't like middle school, you don't want to work there. There were three people involved, all over 45 years old. The ringleader was the senior employee with nearly 20 years there. She had no life outside of work, apparently, was approaching five failed marriages, and extremely insecure about her lot in life. You were either in, middle, or out of the group. Middle meant that they didn't openly dislike or like you. You were sort of invisible. Out was open warfare. The group would start rumors against other employees, make employees take sides against others, deliberately interfere in any kind of decent working relationship between employees. My work life was made hell because I knew how to program a moderately complex volume calculation into an existing Excel sheet and have it spit out the correct pricing and weight info. My job was similar. The girl at my job would go around and spread stuff about other people and always act like a victim, somehow that everyone just tells her stuff but not her spreading rumors about people. When she runs out of things to say or spread, she would go around and hide work supplies so people would struggle and have to search around the store. It almost feels like hide and seek every shift. Story 2 I had worked the night shift at the bank for one year at this point when the manager called me into her office scolds me for not doing any work every day from 4.55 a.m. to 5.10 a.m., wants me to explain to her why I'm taking an extra break every day. I explain to her that I'm not taking an extra break, that the PCs across the bank restart during that time. She's embarrassed, but demands to know why I haven't ever mentioned this to her. I told her this happened every day since the very first day I started. I didn't think to tell her because I thought she already knew since I'm not the first overnight employee they had. She then said that it's procedure to call management whenever there's a system issue, so basically refusing to acknowledge that she shouldn't have brought this up. I ask if she's sure. She confirms. So every morning at 4.55 a.m., I call her. She answers, clearly groggy every time. Each time, I explain I'm calling because the PCs are rebooting and calling just like she asked. A few days later, she told me to stop calling and drop the issue. Edit. Same manager actually declined every promotion I applied for in that department. I was finally promoted within two months of her retirement, and eight months after that promotion, I was promoted again, this time as the department manager. So I did take her job, but it took much longer than it should have. To be honest, I think a better answer would be, I've got the poops, mate. A competent manager would be sending me home right about now. Sorry, I thought pooping my pants at my desk might be disruptive. <laughs> I love this comment. It reminds me of a man at a Scandinavian co-ed bathhouse who had a big honking penis, and someone complained he must be erect. Long story short, penises float, and when a manager came over at the behest of an offended woman, he stood, showed he was in fact not erect, and just had a long penis, and said, What should I do? Should I not have a penis? I had six of these same women who reported me for going to the bathroom, 
walking to the printer or copier, applying hand lotion, taking someone's spring water dues when they came to my desk to pay me, getting a personal phone call, or playing solitaire online when our computer system was down. They watched me constantly. The trick is to report them and ask, why does so-and-so seem to have so much free time to monitor my every move and send so many emails about such? Story 3. When I was 16, I worked at this Chinese restaurant. This 25-year-old waitress worked there. She just hated me. I truly don't know why. She started a rumor that I was this massive slit who went to parties and banged a different guy every weekend. I was a shy nerd who looked 13 who had never been on a date before. I was really flattered that she thought that was possible, and I thought it made me sound really cool. So that's what everyone thought of me, I guess. It was really, really weird how much people cared. Like these full-grown adults. You would not believe how much they talked about this. I was, again, a shy nerd. I kept my head down and never gossiped about anyone and followed all the rules. I was a straight-A student who had never gotten detention and was never late and just showed up to hand people their ham-fried rice. It was downright bizarre to me that anyone even noticed I was there, let alone make up a bunch of lore about me. A lot of the 30-year-old dudes there also started inviting me to their house and trying to get me drunk. Yep, I was a super late bloomer, and again, looked 13. No boobaloobaloobies, didn't even start my period until the year prior. People frequently mistook me for a middle schooler. People are freaking creepy. Oh, and this wasn't like in the 80s or anything. I'm 29. It was more born of jealousy and misplaced competitiveness, but the mother of one of my high school swimming rivals said something similar about me when I was 16. I looked my age, but still. The photo that set her off was taken of me at 15, when I was still rather puppy-fat and baby-faced. It was me in my school uniform, and it appeared in the newspaper when I did well at a national competition. This apparently made her mad. The story of my promiscuousness went around town and probably further afield. I had had one boyfriend, a childhood best friend who lived in a different city and whom I was very fond of. I spent all my time swimming. I had neither the time nor the energy to be promiscuous. I'm 40 now, the age this woman must have been when she was spreading these things about me. I cannot imagine saying such things about a teenager. The older I get, the more revolted I am by what went down amongst that swimming parent crowd. It was so messed up. If I were to hear someone my age now talk about a teenager like that, it would make me extremely uncomfortable, and I can't imagine anyone I know doing so. Story 4 I had a service dog, and this coworker decided to make it her mission to get my service dog kicked out of the office. She kept reporting that my service dog was behaving inappropriately, which she absolutely never did. She was reporting that my service dog was going after food whenever it was present and being aggressive around her. Now, my service dog is a large dog. Her face was at table height. The company had a huge annual potluck lunch. HR knew that this woman would definitely report my service dog for something at the potluck because, you know, food on tables. So the HR team planted themselves where they could see everything at the potluck tables, but hidden enough in the crowd to not be noticed, and waited, stayed there throughout the lunch, watching. They knew that if my service dog was, in fact, ever doing anything inappropriate, this potluck would be irresistible. They also knew that if she did nothing wrong, they'd be able to catch this woman in her lies. As they suspected, she reported my service dog and I yet again. She said that my service dog was getting into the food and bothering everyone in line and generally being a menace. What HR saw for themselves was that my service dog was in fact being very careful to keep her face away from the food, being careful not to touch the tables, and silently and flawlessly did her job of helping me multiple times while I was getting my food, that she stepped out of people's way unprompted in the crowded space and that absolutely no one else in the room was the slightest bit bothered by her and barely even noticed she was there because, despite her 115-pound size, she was an expert at being nearly invisible and unobtrusive. This was all without me giving her a single command or direction that they could spot. She just knew what to do in the situation because it was all just part of her job and she knew what she was supposed to be doing and how to do it. That was the last time they called me in for any reports. And it was to tell me what the coworker who had been harassing me had reported, 
what they'd seen and what they'd told her, and that they were now convinced that every single thing I'd told them had been true, and they'd be leaving me and my service dog alone from then on. Story 5. The lady in my office who monitors how long everyone has been away from their computer. We had a young mother who kept track of how long other people were in the bathroom, came in late, left early, or stood around talking. Keep it in a spreadsheet. My coworker, who almost never said anything bad about anyone, said, she's too young to be that ornery. Did anyone keep track of how much time she spent on her spreadsheet instead of working? About eight years ago, I, a software developer, had a team lead who waited for me to finish my bathroom business. He scolded me in front of the whole team. Open office nonsense. That's the third time you've been in the bathroom for over 20 minutes. It was true, I was having stomach cramps and running. You know the type of feeling where you're just not sure if it's going to be a fart? Yeah, I had that the entire day. Anyway, sadly for him, I love confrontation. So I confronted him right there. That's illegal, and scolding me in front of the team for what could be a medical issue is another problem. I'll email HR about this. You'll find yourself in the CC. And I went back to work. No, nobody clapped. I did email HR, he got an official warning, and he was switched to a different team. The problem with people like this is that they're often intensely insecure about themselves. Blanket statement is blankety, most people are, and afraid of being confronted about it. That's also the solution. Call center I worked at asked me why I left my PC every day at exactly the same time for five minutes. They did this in a group chat. I told them it was roughly an hour after coffee and a bran muffin, and they stopped bugging me about it. Story 6. They talk about high school all the time. How much you want to make a bet I can throw a football over the mountains? Yeah, coach would have put me in the fourth quarter, we would have been state champions, no doubt. No doubt in my mind. Al Bundy scored four touchdowns in a single game at Polk High. Oh, this ring? 87. I threw 28 touchdowns that year. What are you up to now? Mostly thinking about killing myself. I didn't have to worry in high school. Sure, I'll bring up the good old days with my high school friends. I had a rather unique experience. Five years at boarding school, so sometimes people want to hear about it. It is weird how much it comes up in my adult life. I swear I have a life. Honestly, the older I get, the more I resent the peaked in high school phrase as an insult. I certainly didn't because I had a rough childhood and worse teen years, but life can be pretty dang hard as an adult, and I don't really blame anyone for looking back fondly at younger days. In order for your life to be less stressful and better than it was when you were young, you'd have to be pretty dang successful and lucky. I understand that the people that harp on it just come off as lame, but I don't know. I think especially in times like these, we are a little hard on people. Story 7 I shared an office with a coworker on the spectrum, plus my supervisor. I can't remember if this was when we added a fourth person to the same room. I'm ADHD and was self-medicating with massive amounts of coffee and tea throughout the workday, so naturally, I have to pee a lot. One day, the coworker on the spectrum says something about me going on lots of walks. Walks? We're at a small tech company that technically has all the standard bougie flex perks like freaking off for a nap in the middle of the day, but in reality only a few people got away with it, and certainly not with our boss. So she thought I was taking meditative breaks throughout the day because I took my keys with me every time. The building's restrooms were located outside our office, which automatically locked the doors after 5pm, and I regularly worked late. I took my keys with me because I needed the ingrained habit so I didn't accidentally lock myself out one night going to the bathroom. So in front of my boss, I had to explain to my coworker that I'm peeing like five times a day because I'm drinking like a gallon of caffeinated beverages. It was so great that we were the customer service team. ADHD, autism spectrum disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder, the boss. The ASD coworker went to school for cartography so every story she ever told included redrawing a full map of the state on a whiteboard that, for some reason, kept getting erased, despite never needing to write anything else. And I once had to, with grave seriousness, gently ascertain whether she had ever used the ID10T error joke with a client, 
and the NPD boss was, well, a nightmare. Story 8. <laughs> One thing I can tell from the variety of answers is that no matter how someone lives their life, they can and will be judged for it. Are you career-oriented, or do you work hard to earn a living? You have no life. Of course, the same applies if you don't work enough. Some would argue that starting a family is the ultimate goal in life, but people also don't have enough of a life if they're too passionate about their kids. Do you have a strong interest in something, like a hobby, that you devote much of your time to because it's your passion? Say, sports, reading, video games, movies, gardening, whatever? No life. Did you peak in high school or college and life has been rough for you? Maybe just down to bad luck, since? No life. And, of course, if you happen to be some poor soul who self-isolates due to struggling with mental illness, you have to be judged as a no-lifer instead of being met with any kind of empathy for your situation. Maybe we just shouldn't worry too much about how others judge us and just live our lives as we want to. Best honest answer here. People with no lives are the ones who have the time to be judging others for having no lives. Story 9. I was in some training and they gave me a pamphlet and I doodled all over it, then threw it away on the way out of the training. My then-manager pulled it out of the trash and gave it to HR. I had drawn things like knives in the heads of people with balloon bubbles that said, please end my life now, stuff like that. The training was so boring and unnecessary. This was the 90s, so literally think of office space. That's what the call center was like for reals. Anyhow, they called me in to talk about it and asked if I was planning to end my life. I had no idea what they were talking about until they pulled out the pamphlet I had doodled all over. I explained to them that it was just a really boring training and I was doodling to pass the time. I also have ADHD. I flipped it around on my manager and said, What you should really be asking yourselves is why in the world is my manager pulling trash out of the garbage can? Like, who does that? Seems like she has some personal vendetta against me. They transferred me to another team, and that manager basically never spoke with me again for the two years I worked there. Man, that was a crappy job. Collections for Discover Card. Whew. Story 10. One of my supervisors was convinced to cheat on his wife by a younger co-worker who apparently cheats on his girl regularly. Wife found out and booted him and racked about $1,800 of his stuff. No matter, he's got a newfound life as a player and freaking loves it. He's noticed that I'm married to, as he puts it, a baddie, and has low-key outed himself as having stalked my wife's Facebook profile a few times and has told other guys he can't grasp or understand how a goofy-looking fricker like me is married to such a baddie. What's more, I'm die-hard loyal to my wife. I will not cheat or go behind my wife's back. Every day. Every freaking day, this guy and his cronies give me grief for being a dinosaur because I refuse to cheat on my wife. And when it's him and his cronies, all they talk about is getting laid and which women we work with they'd sleep with or have already slept with. So, yeah, shallow, dumb stuff like that. No life at all. Story 11. They use followers and likes as a way to feel superior. I know someone has no life when they get in an argument and say, says the person with zero followers as an insult. Like you spend all your day on your phone making 10 second videos. Why are you proud of that? Hey, by the way, guys, we're almost at 70,000 subscribers, so <laughs> make sure you subscribe, please, <laughs> please. I remember one time last year, a guy tried to hit on me in a bar. I said, no, sorry, I have a boyfriend. And he replied, does your boyfriend have 10K Instagram followers though? I couldn't help laughing, and I still sometimes wonder if that line ever actually works for him. So why don't you ask one of those 10,000 followers out instead? That's unfair. He surely doesn't want to date a family member or a bot. Story 12. Being obsessed with celebrities. As someone who used to be deep in the trenches of celebrity fandom and was obsessed with a few of them over the span of about five years, I can confirm. Standing a celeb is a surefire sign of having no life. Can you explain what was so fascinating or alluring about them? I haven't had a celebrity obsession since I was 12 and clipping posters out of Tiger Beat. 
I'm always curious what adults get out of similar behavior. Story 13. My manager gets mad at anyone who takes time off and complains about them the whole time they're gone. Sorry you don't have a life. Other people do. Maybe you should try it sometime. (laughs) My managers who have been like this in the past also like to loudly proclaim how busy they are and that they're drowning in work. Then I ask, oh, well, can I lend you some help? And they're like, nah, I'm good. They see themselves as the only competent employee, but never learn how to delegate and just end up bitter and isolated. Story 14. Making drama everywhere they go and then saying, why is my life full of drama? Like, which it's not. You just make it that way. Knew a gal who would try to start drama and tell secrets and air out people's laundry to me. I'd just say stuff like, sounds like that's someone's personal stuff. I wouldn't go around telling people that. Or, that doesn't sound like drama, just a normal progression in life. Just shut them down and let them know it's not cool, and I refuse to play along. Story 15. Being me on here, looking for things that I'm guilty of doing. True crime, glass of wine, bed by nine. Does this sound like you? You are not alone. But there is no number for you to call for support, because we are all introverts and do not have the energy to interact with you. Hopefully you understand. Cheers. Dang it, you gave me another cross-stitch sampler idea. Story 16. Worrying about what others do with their life. I think if someone is obsessed with what someone else does, they don't have anything in their own life going on. This is especially true for anyone who is obsessed about the intimate life, or lack thereof, of someone other than them that they are not in a relationship with. Story 17. I swear I saw this same post a few weeks ago, Which means I'm on the internet way too much. So, that. This. And the what keeps you from yourself. I swear there's one on the internet every week. Story 18. Lacking brain activity, a heartbeat, and breathing. 100%. This is how we knew Grandpa wasn't alive at last year's Thanksgiving dinner. Story 19. Reporting on children selling lemonade and water without a permit. Story 20. Anyone who doesn't personally like me. Story 21. They are up in yours. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.